it's a bunch of stuff has happened this week. We're back again. And, you know, we were talking right before the show. It was just like, oh, yeah, it's Dream Rules has happened since the last <laughs> time we podcast. And I didn't even realize uh, that it had been that long ago. And you know what? Um, I didn't even really watch it. I saw everybody's takes um, on on that main event. And I've seen I've seen plenty of the main event, uh, which just uh, makes me sad. It was it was interesting. Um you know, I I've seen the the joke memes that uh it was John Cena that did it cuz you can't see him. Yeah. Um the I think the biggest disappointment for me is that the match was it was it was just amazing. Um mm. I mean and, and we got this this really interesting and it it could have flopped for some people, but I I I dug it. This interesting moment where the heartbeat from his entrance started and the whole arena went red and the, mm-hmm. the demon kind of like sprang back to life. Like Hulk Hogan used to do when he would charge up. So you got this and then the demon goes on a tear. Like the match didn't even happen at any point before this. Like he is just whooping Roman's ass. Right. Um, so, I mean, th- I thought it was really cool. Uh, y- you know, use all this stuff. It was a little weird that, um, they, they got through the heartbeat and the demon got back up. And they forgot to turn it off. So like the entrance <laughs> music played through a lot of this. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he's, he, he, he like hulks up. He's, he's kicking ass, climbs to the top rope to hit the finish. Uh, the, the fucking rope just collapses out from under him. Like this match was great. Roman thrives in these matches like. I remember a couple of years ago, I'm pretty sure it was Extreme Rules when it was Roman and AJ Styles, which was yeah. the, the match where like I really turned the corner on liking Roman a lot. Um, so I, I really hated like if you're if you're going to have the demon lose, have the demon lose because like the Usos come down with chairs and just completely obliterate his ass. Like do something like that. Don't. Yeah. Some sort of divine intervention costs the demon his win. Uh, was a little a little short sighted and, and essentially it felt lazy. Um, God's still uh, angry about Vince beating him in that one match years ago that he's got you know he's trying to take revenge wherever he can. I mean, I <laughs> honestly I I tried to look at this from a bunch of different ways. Um, how how can they justify this come SmackDown? Um, they didn't address it at all. Uh, it basically just it, it, they recapped the match. They showed him falling off the rope as it collapsed. That was it. Um, I mean, after it happened and Roman won, he kind of looked up to the rafters like some sort of divine intervention. In my mind, I built this thing as some like long form. They finally got the rock on board. Roman's going to cut some promo about how the high chief did it. And that was going to be how they brought (laughs) the rock back. Um, I had built this whole grand scenario of how this was going to make sense. And I think that that too added to my disappointment a little bit when yeah. all of SmackDown came and went and we got nothing. Um, I, I really did. I thought that they were going to, they were going to use this as some sort of, you know, continuance of, of the bloodline build. Uh, and we didn't get it. Uh, the demon nor Finn Balor were anywhere to be seen on SmackDown. Um, nor did either one of them get drafted anywhere. Um, you know, the guy that just had a universal championship match should probably get drafted somewhere before Baron Corbin and, uh, Riddick Moss. Yeah. You you would, you would think, um, Riddick Moss. Corbin's luck's turning around, man. Riddick Moss, who is now known as Madcap Moss for some fucking reason. Um, I don't know. It's like adding Bearcat to Keith Lee. Uh, (laughs) I I don't get that at all. A little weird. Um, But yeah, the rest of the show was fine. Um, I was it. It it does feel like it's been forever ago. So I was scrolling through. I was kind of looking forward to Liv Morgan and Carmella. They got bumped to the kickoff show um, in place of of a a randomly thrown together New Day versus AJ and Omos and Bobby Lashley match. Right. Um, If you're going to have E and Lashley in the same ring, that belt needs to be on the damn line. 
Um, I'm okay with an AJ Omos New Day filler match. You know, j- call it a number one contenders match. I'm okay with that. Um, just to just to get all those guys on the on the show. Um, other than that, um, a little disappointed in the. Uh, I mean, the match was great. Uh, Flair versus Alexa Bliss. Uh, match was great. I really enjoyed it. Um, I there was a lot of, you know, it, it was sort of weird. Um, I hate the idea of. I, I mean, I, I kind of like the idea now that Alexa is going to be off TV for a little while, sort of disappear. Um, I don't know if it if it triggered something for Vince um, when Charlotte called them out on live TV that they mm. had stolen someone else's gimmick and given it to Alexa. Uh, but it, it does seem like we're going to get a, a break from Alexa. She's going to come back uh, um, probably in a more Little Miss Bliss capacity. And we will we will bid a fond farewell to the remnants of the fiend here. Yeah. Oh, I, I completely forgot. But triple threat for the United States Championship. That match was just fucking awesome. Um I mean, you you throw Sheamus and Jeff Hardy in a ring, you're going to get a great one anyway. Damian Priest continues to, uh, I don't want to say surprise because I, I mean I know the guy can go, but uh, on the whole, like that, all three of those guys put forth one hell of a match, and I I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I mean, Damian Priest is someone that's it's definitely vastly improved from his days towards the end of his uh, his Ring of Honor run. Uh, I mean, there were some match matches he had. Uh, I remember one against um, Marty Skrull that just like, felt real rough. And it was kind of like he just, you know, in one one hand, he's in there with a bunch of guys that are there that were smaller than him at Ring of Honor. And maybe it, it almost kind of felt like he didn't really understand the limits of his own power. Like like and just maybe going a little too hard with some of those guys. Um, but he's I think he's just he's shaken off that greenness that he had in Ring of Honor overall. Plus, he's in there with guys that are closer to his own size that probably works out uh, in his favor as well. So in, so in Ring of Honor, he was the Randy Orton and the rest of the roster was the Bollywood boys. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I will I will bridge from from Extreme Rules to SmackDown here, uh, utilizing a jumping off point that the, the show provided. Uh, Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair were having a banger. Um, that ended in the most WWE of fashions. Um, of course. Wasn't, I mean, it's it's never bad for Sasha Banks to come out, but for this match to have ended with the, the backlash from SummerSlam, for this match to have ended on a Sasha Banks interference, just, I mean, come the fuck on already. <laughs> um, so, Becky retained Bianca got beat to shit by Sasha Banks for inexplicable, like truly inexplicable reasons at this point. Right. Like, I, I I don't understand why Sasha would just focus on Bianca. Becky's the one with the belt. Um, now we're getting a triple threat match at WWE blood money in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> um, so fine. Uh, except Bianca's on her way to raw as a result of night one of the draft. Um, I assume that means that the street profits are also headed to raw. Um, but it also adds a little, nah, bit. they're going to break up the street profits and they're going to leave. Uh, she's married to Montez, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're going to move Montez to, to smack that. <laughs> leave Montez, <laughs> move Angelo Dawkins. We're yeah. going to get, they're going to use the next year to build to a Matt Hardy edge level feud. <laughs> yeah. Um, so some shakeups in the, in the draft. Um, I'm sure raw wanted to wait until raw to make their big, like, Hey, these are the guys that we got. So <sighs> Bianca heading over there. It's a big get. I mean, she's, there's a ton of talent there. Um, but it felt like Raw got a little shafted um, in this in this first night of the draft. You know, we've got Roman staying. We've got, you know, SmackDown kept SmackDown brought up Hit Row. I think Hit Row on SmackDown is the only way that Hit Row works. 
Um, yeah. Mostly because SmackDown has seemed to utilize. I don't, I don't necessarily want to knock USA or like the different thought processes on the different shows, but wrestlers of color have been utilized in such a better way on SmackDown. So I don't fear for hit row going to SmackDown. If they end up on raw, I worry that they end up, you know, that they really uh, try to push, you know, the, the kind of stereotype thing. So I love the idea of them going to SmackDown. Um, the big one for me, Drew McIntyre is also going to SmackDown. Um, he was he was kind of your raw poster boy um for for a very long time now uh so now you're uh, wh- who i would i would say are the the top two promoted men in the company are both on smackdown i think you know i think that's to me uh, with big e being the number one draft pick and i know he's a champion so it's like almost like you got to you got to pick that champion on each brand as your number one pick but at the same time by the by them kind of getting rid of some of these people i kind of feel like they're they really are putting some confidence behind big e um by leaving him kind of as the biggest name i mean we have we also have edge as well and rk bro uh on on raw um we got keith bearcat lee on here uh (laughs) The greatest but, moment of the draft came when yeah. Raw drafted RK Bro, and it mm. came from the the most consistent piece on WWE programming, Pat McAfee, when he <laughs> he like outright looked at Michael Cole and said, "I was really hoping that SmackDown would get RK Bro so I could reach those levels of altitude with them on Friday nights." <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pat McAfee got to make a weed joke during the draft. Oh man, one thing have we heard? Have we heard where Shinsuke's going? We have and not. Boogs? Um, okay, because that would be a real sad thing if McAfee, Shinsuke, and Booze got uh got separated. Uh, that would be a real travesty. It it really would. Um, I I agree with you that the, it does seem like faith is is being placed in Big E. Um, hmm. what does bother me is that none of this goes through until, um, the night after blood money, uh, Brock Lesnar is a proclaimed free agent, which makes me wonder no matter how the match goes down in Saudi Arabia, are we on the road to Brock Lesnar showing up dethroning big E and then immediately facing Roman again. But then why? Is this for like a unification match or something? No, like just, that just so that we got the same match yet again at Survivor Series. Yeah. The one, oh, like the a one champion pos- versus yeah. sam- champion? Oh, I, the, get, I get the you. The one I positive you. that I see here is that uh, it this is the only pay-per-view between now and Survivor Series. So even if Brock ends up on Raw, you'd, you'd have to have Brock wrestle a match on Raw to get that belt off of Big E. So you've either got Roman Brock ending in some sort of weird thing and some like chaos nightmare scenario happens where Brock gets the belt on Raw so that he can face Roman again. Or... Another nightmare chaos scenario where Brock wins the belt in Saudi Arabia because that's what the crown prince wants. <laughs> and then we get another Brock Lesnar versus a member of the New Day match, which, if memory serves correctly, has never fared well for the people he's been put in the ring with. I do, however, like Brock Lesnar right now. This kind of face version of Brock Lesnar that does all of his own talking and seems super excited to be there. I'm on board board for it. Like he looked like he was having the time of his life on SmackDown on Friday. Like damn, at least it's something different. Yeah. He gets to have his weird little ponytail. He gets to, I mean, he's, he's playing mind games with Roman like on his own. Um, I, I, I love it. He was bopping around the ring. 
you know, he had a, a skip in his step while he was like tormenting Roman as he was taunting or like destroying the Usos. Like, I'm here for this Brock Lesnar. I was here for money in the bank. Boom Brock. Like, I loved Boom Brock um, a lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that it gave him personality and character that I had I'd never really seen before. Um, and now I think they've, they've given him something that he's enjoying doing. And I'm I'm loving it. Um, so I, I'm afraid we're on the, we're on the road to having 82 more Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns matches. Um, I, I'm afraid I'm, that we're going to have a biggie, like losing in 10 seconds match somehow. Kind of just to go, just to go with the new day. I do think they would give him at least a five minute match because biggie, you know, physically is like a little bit closer up there to Brock than, than Kofi was, but and I, I think I think Brock does like in in interactions. Brock has seemed to have a level of respect for Biggie, yeah. Um, just just power wise, um, in their interactions in Rumble matches and whatnot. I I think that he would actually go out there and give him, you know, eight, ten, twelve minutes, um, and try to put on a show. I think Brock Lesnar. There's a certain level of vanity with Brock Lesnar. Where when he's on and he wants mm. to do what he's asked to do, Brock Lesnar can is probably the most talented guy in the company. He's like, and I, I say that a lot about Randy Orton as well. I, right. I think Brock Lesnar's in the exact same boat. When he's motivated and he wants to get in there and take a couple of bumps and make the match good, Brock can go with anybody. It's just really seemingly hard for them to find anybody that he actually wants to do that with. Right. Um, consistently putting him opposite undertaker and Goldberg probably didn't help. <laughs> All those matches with undertaker are pretty decent. If you take away the, you know, the nostalgia for the undertaker and just like, look at it more, just more like that. Like it is, it is pretty good. Some of those matches are pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see. I don't I don't know if this changes a lot really for the brands. I haven't seen anything so far where I'm like, oh yeah, like this is gonna turn things around for WFE, like as far as the drafts, but it's it's at least different. I feel like Hit Row could they have the potential of breaking at least a little bit of some kind of pop culture barrier, I think. Yeah. Uh, with SmackDown and especially with it being on Fox could be pretty good. And then with Kofi and Xavier Woods also on the brand, I, I could imagine. And I'm assuming uh, the Usos will probably stay on SmackDown, but who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll do something crazy and try to split up the 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 bloodline somehow. But I think, you know, being in that rotation with those guys could make things interesting. I wonder what they do with the North American title. Do they do they have Swerve uh, defend it um, and, you know, lose on the way out? Or do we have um, or do we just have it, you know, vacant becomes champion? Does he still have it? Yeah, he still he had it last Tuesday. I did watch my thing like I, he definitely was pointing to it. OK, because I. I was when they got drafted, I watched Smackdown this morning and in that moment, like I, you could see the belt kind of in the image they used. Yeah. And I kept thinking, I, I honestly don't know if he has that belt or not. Like, I'll be I'll be honest. Hit row is not necessarily for me. Like the yeah. the, the gimmick. Um, I, I, I know it's it's good for the brand and, and whatnot. Um, so that like more power to him. But I didn't I didn't realize he still had the belt. And I, I don't think he's really I, defended it much. I couldn't figure out who the hell had the belt. Um, I think it's a problem of uh, the fact that they've been using Hit Row as a um, opportunity for the Hulu edit uh, to cut out out from because you know they they'll they'll occasionally do some wrestling matches and stuff, but the, they do a decent amount of promos, and then that's just the thing that gets cut from the Hulu edit. And I also think that, and he hasn't really defended the title that much. Yeah. Um, compared to like the cruiserweight or any of the other championships on on NXT, um, so you know, I, if unless somehow we get Braun Breaker drafted to uh, Raw or SmackDown tomorrow, 
Um, I kind of feel like, you know, maybe, maybe if you want to hot shot Braun Breaker, but not like completely hot shot him to like Raw or SmackDown, go ahead, go ahead and put have him go against Swerve for that um, for that championship. Maybe like have a uh, Swerve, you know, pass that on on his way out to Braun Breaker. I think he could do a lot with it, and I think he'd be a fun champion. And that's crazy because we've only seen him for like three weeks now. Is this three or four weeks? I can't remember what, what yeah. week we are on I, 2.0, but yeah. I, I love that this guy is so good and his energy is so great that like every every website, every talking head, everybody is like just over the moon about this guy. Um, I, it, it thrills me. Um, the other thing that from the draft that uh, I, I'm worried about is uh, the return of Austin Theory to Raw, um, mostly because I don't want him to go by himself. Uh, yeah, the, the goofy ass, the the entire package that is the way um, they the gimmick itself, like they all thrive off each other. We all know Johnny Gargano's just absolutely amazing, but he's, he's too small to be a, a, a Vince champ. Um, yeah. but I really think that it, if you, if you're going to need people to, to put on, you know, tag matches and, and, you know, you're going to need talent everywhere. Um, they also bring the level of entertainment that you just traded to SmackDown, uh, by splitting the new day up again. Um, yeah. I, I really would like to see the rest of the way go with him to Raw, including Dexter Loomis, who I do believe is a Vince size champ, even if the gimmick probably won't work for Vince. Um, I, I I could see him being a, a mid card champ pretty quickly, just based on his size alone. Um, but NXT was great this week. Um, all I saw was the Hulu edit, as as always. Um, I uh, Peacock doesn't work well enough for me to go to any great lengths. Uh, so <laughs> and I don't pay for no commercials on Peacock. So I uh, yeah, I'm not watching things on Peacock unless absolutely necessary. Yeah, I do. I, I pay the five bucks. I'm, I'm not oh, going to yeah. lie. Um, but uh, you know that. I thought it was a great episode and they did a fantastic job of using it. The uh, the Roderick Strong, Grayson Waller cruiserweight match was really the only showcase that the, the men's division had. Uh, and it was great. Um, I love I love the the light up diamond on the ring when Diamond Mine comes out. Uh, Roddy's great. Um, I'm glad they found a, a decent use for him. But the women got got to put on a clinic this week, uh, including our, uh, you know, Hit Row's own. Versus, and I, I hate that I don't know either of their names, but the the woman from Hit Row took on mm. the, the woman who is, I guess, part of Legato del Fantasma now um, yeah. in a, a, you know, no DQ match. And just they put on a show. They were beating the hell out of each other. It was amazing. Yeah, there was one chair spot that looked a little uh, uncomfortable, <laughs> yeah. just to say the least. A little so, bit. Um, yeah. You know, Raquel Gonzalez wrestled Frankie Monet in a good one. Um, shit, who the hell, who attacked her at the end? I can't remember. Yeah, I don't remember either. God, I remember I, the match being good. Yeah, which I'm not going to look it up. But Raquel Gonzalez is, is still putting on great matches. Um, there was a, a women's tag title match, um, which sort of just... They're sort of shoehorning this this belt. It kind of gets stuck in there periodically, but it always feels like they're they're just giving title shots in squash matches. Um, so it's it's a little weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a great showing from the women. Uh, you did get a a vignette that did not get edited out of the Hulu version from Braun Breaker, uh, further solidifying my love for this this just chaos of this mass of chaotic energy. Uh, he's wonderful. Um, but yeah, NXT definitely won the week for WWE, uh, which is good because they've they've kind of been on a, a weird cruise control kind of pattern here lately. But uh, yeah, it's a great show. Um, uh, so that that uh, I guess that brings us to Tony Khan's promotion. So Yeah, well, one thing I want to say with the draft we were talking about uh, Vince sized champions. Well, we do have and and the return of you know certain people to to Raw or SmackDown. 
that have been, uh, you know, back on NXT and stuff. We have, as announced on Talking Smack, Drake Maverick is making his way back to Raw, presumably for never ending 24 seven championship matches with Reggie and, and all them. So, I wonder if somebody needs a manager. I I mean, like, he I could, may, if they I'm, I'm assuming him, they'll do both. <laughs> if, if that's the case, if they paired him with like a heel Keith Lee. Yeah, I because I Keith Lee's just got this like teddy bear energy about him. And oh, I can, the, the old Adam Cole uh, pitch posi- position kind of, to be yeah. <laughs> Keith I, I Lee's can, manager. Like Keith Lee, there's something about him that he just seems inherently like a good dude. It may mm. have been him being the the vocal male part of the Me Too movement. There was mm. something. He just seems like a teddy bear. Uh, so I and I Drake Maverick on, you know, 205 Live, you know, rest in peace. Um <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it still exists, but I don't know that they have anybody under 205 anymore. Um, so I I could see it. Um, it'd be a great use for him because um, he, he doesn't really wrestle a whole lot on NXT anyways. Um, right. So at least he can keep a paycheck coming in. We'll get to see Keith Lee more if they go to the trouble of giving him a manager. Um, so, yeah, I'm 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 all for it. Find find something. Either that or maybe the authors of pain are coming back because I, I still I, I don't know. Did they get released? I don't remember. Yeah, they did get released. OK, they did get released. Yeah. OK, I was going to say, I don't remember their names being on any of those those releases, but they, they still just don't exist anymore. So who knows? Yeah. Um, yeah, let's jump over to, to Tony Khan's promotion. We were talking about God earlier and a little, little revenge from God. Um, God's favorite champion. Uh, didn't uh, kind of wondering what what happened there. Uh, Sammy Guevara took took it down from from Miro, um, and at one hand I'm like, oh okay, that's uh, that's that's cool, and I I'm, I am kind of maybe excited if this leads to uh, an Omega Miro match. Miro match, I'd be kind of for that. I kind of would would dig that a little bit, and he's got to be a high up in there the rankings because he hasn't hasn't really lost since um i mean this is his first loss yeah so um he's got to be high up in the rankings if you want to actually pay attention to that um so that's kind of my biggest takeaway i i'm really uh potentially excited about that um but uh i didn't love the rochester new york crowd uh we got a lot of we got a lot of (laughs) what chance we got a lot of cm punk chance even though he was in the building but they were chanting it like like we were denying him i mean yeah yeah we were denying him a little bit he's on commentary but like i don't know i'm like, sure he gave them some kind of nice go home speech at the end you got they, you got to hear cult of personality he did an entrance for you just yeah. just be happy with it i mean they the elite did troll the shit out of them with the uh, here comes the greatest promo in pro wrestling, Nakazawa. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the crowd launched into the CM Punk chant, um, which I, I guess they, they were just saying, you know, you got the wrong guy there. Um, but yeah, the, the crowd was they they were they were iffy, but it's I, I don't like the what chance, but the what chance are going to be the the CM Punk chant now that we've got CM Punk back. Um, so I, I, I don't know. Maybe Rochester just doesn't get enough wrestling shows. Um, yeah. So, I so. mean, I did like all the Brody, uh, Brody Lee signs. I did like, uh, I did like the dark order moment where they, they kind of brought back the dark, dark order after, uh, the, you know, month of kind of a couple months of kind of friction there. Um, and that was a nice moment with negative one and, and, and all that. Uh, but overall, uh, not my favorite crowd that they've they've gone to for a while. Um, I, uh, I did like that. I, and I, I don't know if it's it's Tony Khan leaking shit to, to just build excitement. But I did love that uh, Bray Wyatt did not or Wyndham Rotunda did not show up. Um, and the the Dark Order coming together moment felt like where that was going to get shoehorned. Yeah. Um, so I loved that he he didn't turn up here 
uh, as everyone was expecting. Uh, that was mm. a nice moment. Uh, negative one got, I mean, he got a nice moment on both dynamite and rampage. Um, so I, I, I did, I loved that they did not just try to force that where it didn't need to happen. Um, he's most likely going to be the Joker in that, uh, that ladder match. Um, but who knows? I, I, I mean, I might, I'm either for that or for, uh, I don't know the return of Hangman. Like I know he, jo- Hangman's been the Joker before, uh, and then uh, at that point, uh, we bought we bought tickets to Minneapolis, so uh, to to the the full gear. And if that's in the on the cards, I'm going to be a little bit more motivated to actually try to go to that show. Uh, <laughs> we got tickets just anyway, just to just to to be safe if if we wanted to go. Um, but yeah, man, it's uh, if Hangman returns, I'm going to be excited about that. So. And nobody from Minneapolis listens to this, but I'm going to put the question out there anyway. Uh, <laughs> Minneapolis, why are your hotels like a third of the price of your Airbnbs? It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, <laughs> like, I, I don't get it. I when, when you got I mean, hundred dollars a night hotels, I assumed like, OK, like really nice places in downtown Minneapolis will be like 60 bucks on Airbnb. They're not. They're three hundred dollars. And on top of that, like you got to at least stay two nights and the cleaning fee is like one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, it's it's yeah. A, it's a bit nuts. So, yes, people of Minneapolis, you are you are the reason we're having a bit of trouble committing <laughs> to coming up there for full gear. Oh, man. Um, and, you know, COVID and all these other factors, too. And then plus I'll be out of the country for two weeks, like right prior to that. So, don't, you know, whatever. Don't, don't pitch your lefty COVID <laughs> <laughs> I, I i i kid i kid i believe the science <laughs> um the other other tony khan thing i liked i really enjoyed um i watched rampage really enjoyed daniel bryan versus nick jackson really solid match one of one of the favorite favorites of this week for me um that i saw you know and again i'll agree with you nxt was really strong i i really probably the number two for me this week probably be that that um women's match that opened nxt um that yeah. extreme rules match yeah. um at least with that i watched on tv uh because i watched uh some really great matches at uh, pwg last week um uh aramis versus dragon lee fantastic matches one of the best matches i've seen in person and then also, uh, uh, I did not know, and so we're kind of still talking about AEW here, but I did not know, I was, I think I, previous week I talked about um, Malachi Black being a singles guy, kind of a lone wolf. I didn't feel like it made sense for him to like take over the Dark Order. I still believe that, but he tagged with Brody King and they called themselves the Kings of the Black Throne and man, those two have really good chemistry together. And I really see like Malachi Black as someone that could really benefit from tagging with somebody in uh, in AEW, whether that's, you know, you actually get Brody King in kind of forbidden door situation, get get him in there or or something. Uh, but I, I would love to see them in AEW tear it up or at least just him to find someone cool that he has chemistry with in AEW as well. I think that would work, work out pretty well. And just maybe for him to not do this forever, Cody Rhodes, uh, uh, nightmare family battle. Yeah, that, that would be great. Cause it's, it's not doing anybody any favors. I mean, he's, he's racking up wins and, um, and all, but you know, I, I, I gotta be honest. The nightmare family's gotta die. It's it's yeah. just got to die. I know he committed to it and got a damn neck tattoo, but it's it's got to die. Um, it's it's killing it's killing everybody at this point. Um, you know, Cody's getting booed, and that's that's not that's not good. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, shit, what was I gonna say? But yeah, I've um. I, I don't know why it took me this long to realize it, but uh, I love this thing Tony Khan does where I'm not going to open the shows uh, aside from, you know, CM Punk's return. Uh, I'm not going to sh- open the shows with, uh, you know, 20 minute bullshit promo segments. I'm going to give yeah. you the match of the night right out of the gate. And then you're not going to want to change the channel because yeah. you're going to want to know what's in the main event because I just gave you one. Um 
I, I'm I'm loving it. You know, you got Brian Danielson opens the show against one of the young bucks and puts on just an amazing match. Uh, they they worked great together. Um, shit, what what was the opener on with Adam Cole? Yeah, Adam, Adam Cole, Cole Jungle opened, Boy. Jungle Adam, Boy. Boy, Adam Cole Jungle Boy opened Dynamite, and that match was fantastic. If you ever doubted whether or not Jungle Boy deserved all the like the top tier praise he gets, um, watch that match because you know Adam Cole is as good as he is, uh, and they they just it was fantastic. Um, so yeah, I, I'm loving this hook me right out of the gate and then you can, you know, you can drop the little promos here and there throughout, but, you know, book and book ending the show with main events twice a week, three times a week when you've got a pay-per-view just, I'm, I'm yeah. digging it uh, and it you're using the roster. You've got 10 times the talent you've actually got TV time for, but you're making it work by doing this. And it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's uh, crazy. And then we didn't even talk about the meme of the week. Armed Anderson. Uh, talking about the time he would, the, a very, very plausible, like very detailed in the sense that it seems like it might've happened. Uh, how, how Arn Anderson would respond to a carjacker by shooting him in the head with a Glock. Um, uh, yeah, that was that was something. That was some kind of promo. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought I had a fever dream where I was watching Gran Torino again. Um, <laughs> because that's what that promo was. Um, it got a lot of positive reaction online. I did love that CM Punk referred to him as Armed Anderson. <laughs> yeah. Like he seemed a little uncomfortable. And then Nyla Rose just went for it on Twitter. She's like, this is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I I don't know. It's it's definitely not the right climate in the nation to be talking about shooting carjackers. <laughs> um, I, I get I get what he was going for, that, that Cody's lost the edge and lost the ruthlessness. Um we're going to get a rub. I don't know how you get a rubber match when Cody's already lost two. We're going to get another Malachi Cody match um, that Cody's got to lose. If yeah. Cody Cody goes over in that one, the boos are on, they're going to get to Roman levels four yeah. years ago. Um, and that's, that's not okay for one of your EVPs who's trying to promote his reality series. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what the point was. Um, it's not like a, uh, a, a now, um, going for the throat. Cody Rhodes can suddenly challenge for the title again because he yeah. can't, he, he, he did that to himself. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what the point was. It definitely, um, I didn't like it. Uh, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of the internet did, but I didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed the memes. I enjoyed the meme that Arn spelled backwards as NRA. I enjoyed the armed Anderson meme. I enjoyed all the memes. I was just like, uh, this is not what I would have done uh, if I was in this position uh, it, for a promo. <laughs> it harkened back to uh, Brian Pillman shooting home invader Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. And that didn't go over well. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, which, speaking of which, uh, I, I completely spaced and missed it. Uh, we got that mo basically that moment on SmackDown again as Seth Rollins' home invader broke into Edge's house <laughs> that inexplicably the door was unlocked to, uh, even though nobody was home. Um, yeah, we got, a, we got a Seth Rollins' home invasion a in uh, North Carolina at the uh, at the Copeland house uh, that in a very, very small way. Uh, opened the forbidden door. Uh, Edge referenced FTR uh, as part of part of the uh, the phone call he had with Beth Phoenix uh, during this home invasion. Huh. And then. Because um, I, I mean, it was it was subtle and it, it had to have just been kind of a nod to them because that. I can't remember what David and Dennis, I guess, are their real names, uh, something like that. But he said he, he told Beth to go to her brother's house and he was going to call Dennis and David and they would go take care of it. 
Um, to which Dax responded on Twitter, uh, don't worry, I'm headed that way and I'm going to whoop his <laughs> punk ass. <laughs> so I, I liked that they got a very, very subtle forbidden door moment there. Yeah. Um, my question was, why is Beth not just headed home? Because I'm pretty sure she could whoop <laughs> Seth Rollins' ass. <laughs> like twice, like, like, like yeah. badly. Like, like he, he would not be able to walk like after she was done, <laughs> done with him. Yeah, I know they don't want to have intergender matches, but uh, I've seen Beth workouts work or Beth Phoenix's workout videos. Yeah. CrossFit Jesus couldn't couldn't hold his own with Beth Phoenix. She would yeah. whoop his ass. Yeah. <laughs> that was my biggest thing there. Like, why why is Beth having to go somewhere else for safety? Oh man. So how was Moose doing this week? Right, we're finishing up the show. Moose did not have a match. Uh, Moose came out after Eddie Edwards beat Morrissey. Moose came out and Morrissey and Moose beat the hell out of Eddie Edwards while his wife was forced to watch. Um, So they got some pretty, pretty heavy heat. Um, Just Moose doing Moose things, you know. Yeah, he's he's got to play heel. It works. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I'm I'm gonna watch Raw in anticipation that that Raw has drafted Moose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna get a random moment where Impact wrestler Moose gets signed by WWE. But because it doesn't take effect till the end of October, uh, Moose is also gonna show up in AEW and New New Japan. Yeah. Um, and MLW, like why not? All the places. Yeah. The, um, the WWE is gonna get sued for some kind of tampering. Yeah, uh, which is fine. Work it out in storyline. And Moose is going to bridge. Moose is going to kick open the forbidden door. Um, he's going to become a tag team with Brian Danielson. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the Moose Brian Danielson tandem is going to I mean, we're going to get, you know, rainbows and unicorns and make the wrestling world a better place. And it's that that's how this is going to work. All right. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. We'll see you next week. Watch Impact. Moose is worth it.